Let's add the pointer to DXGI device as a member of graphics engine class. And let's pass it in the query interface method. Now we have to do that again with the XGI device, but we will call get parent instead of query interface and we will get the instance of the DXGI adapter class. Let's do it again with the XGI adapter to return the instance of the XGI factory class. Finally, we have the instance of the factory class that allows us to create the swap chain. At this point, we have to initialize our swap chain, but we have to get the pointer to the XGI factory in swap chain class to actually create it. How can we do this? There are a lot of ways to do it. My favorite way is to make swap chain a friend class of graphics engine. In this way, we can access the private members of graphics engine like the pointer to factory for a swap chain class. And also, we don't expose its private members to all, but only to specific friend classes. Let's add our usual methods, init and release. And let's implement them with the create declaration definition function. Now we have to access factory from graphics engine. So as first thing, let's include graphics engine header file. And in init method, we can start to call get function retrieve the factory and get the create swap chain method. As we can see, create swap chain requires three parameters. The first is a pointer to DirectX device, so let's get it. The second required parameter is a pointer to a swap chain descriptor, a C++ structure in which we have to insert some important values like the handle and size of our window. So let's add an object of type DXGI swap chain desk. To avoid some undesired effects caused by some dirty initial values in the structure, we can use zero memory that allows us to fill all the memory occupied by our descriptor with zero. The first value to assign is the buffer count. 
As we said before, we need two buffers, a front buffer and a back buffer. Buffer count needs the amount of buffers we want to add to our swap chain. In window width mode, the swap chain needs only one buffer, since there is already a front buffer, that is the desktop itself, handled by the desktop window manager of Windows operating system. Now we have to set the size of our window. So let's go to add the necessary parameters in init method. That will be the handle and size of the window. we have arrived at an important attribute, the pixel format of the frame buffers of our swap chain. We will choose a format in which we have 8 bits or 1 byte for each of the four color channels of our pixels, red, green, blue and alpha. Here we have to set the refresh rate in Hz. Let's set 60 Hz. This is another important attribute. Here we have to decide how to use the buffers of our swap chain. We will treat them as render targets. We will look more deeply into the render target in the next tutorials. Well, now all we need is to pass the handle of our window, the number of multi-samples per pixel of which we will talk afterwards, and in the end, let's enable the windowed mode. Very well, we have finished to fill our descriptor. Let's pass it in create swap chain. The last parameter is the output of the function that returns to us the pointer to the swap chain just created. Let's add the output pointer as member of swap chain class. And let's finish adding the last parameter. So good! To conclude the implementation of our init method, let's check the result of creation of the swap chain. We can now start the implementation of release method that consists very simply to release the swap chain instance. At this point, we have finished to implement the first part of the swap chain class. What we need to do now is to actually create instances of this class. And as we said, it will be the graphics engine class that will create these instances through the create swap chain method. So let's implement create swap chain method by including swap chain header file in graphics engine C file. and allocating an instance of swap chain by calling the new operator. In this case, we have to return in swap chain C++ file 
and in release method we have to add delete this instruction well the swap chain part is finished now it's the moment to pass to app window and to use our graphics engine to create a swap chain for it Let's get our just created swap chain and let's initialize it. So, here we need of the handle and size of our window. But we haven't implemented a method yet that returns the size. So, let's go to window class and let's implement a method called get client window rect. To retrieve the internal size of our window, in which we don't consider the size of the title bar, we have to call get client rect. After this, we can return to app window, get the size of the client area and pass the width that is the difference between right and left positions and the, and the height that is instead the difference between bottom and top position. At this point, we have nothing else to do than release our swap chain in onDestroy event. Well, we have almost finished. It remains to set the handle of our window before the onCreate event is called. Otherwise, when we initialize the swap chain, we will pass an invalid window handle. So, Let's return to window class and let's implement another method called simply set hwnd. And uh, let's call it just before of the invoking of onCreate method. As very last thing, we have to release all the DXGI resources. So let's go to Graphics Engine class and let's release them in the release method. That's all for now folks, in this tutorial we have seen how to create and set up our swap chain that allowed us to link DirectX to our window. In the next tutorial we will see how to actually draw on the back buffer of our swap chain and how to present it on the screen. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Thanks for watching.